Resentment is an unpleasant emotion, but also it is real trouble for relationships. And so when it shows up, it's important that we get our eyes on it fast and we deal with what's going on. I'm Stacy Rockline and I'm a relationship coach. I help people communicate more clearly so they can close the distance in their relationship, they can handle conflict in a healthy way, and they can heal what's been broken. Resentment can be low grade. Resentment can be pretty big. When it shows up um, with a client, and I can kind of hear it, it in the background of what they're talking about, it's a little bit of a red flag to me because that means there are some problems brewing and they need to be handled before they get really big. And resentment can happen with the best of intentions. Like for example, when Noel and I first got married, we didn't have a washer and dryer. So the first seven-ish years, I took everything to the laundromat. Now, I was a math teacher, so I was home by about four, and he still had hours of work. And so I would take all of the clothes, mine and his, all of the towels and the sheets and stuff, and I would go to the laundromat where, how awesome are laundromats? You can lo load everything in at one time. It was convenient. It was it made sense because of the hours, and it was a kindness that I did. As my friend said, why are you washing his clothes? You don't wear them, right? That's a nice thing to do. And I was happy to do it. But over time, that became something I was resentful of. And these are the reasons why. It turned into an expectation. At some point in time, everybody, me included, just expected me to do that. That became one of my household duties. And when now I'm at home and I have a washer and dryer and little kids, laundry can go all day long. It's not like the laundromat anymore. So it became an expectation. And also, gratitude was no longer there. In the beginning, Noel was so thankful. But once it became an expectation, I wasn't getting thanked for it. There was no more gratitude about it. And so then I became resentful. And when we become resentful, if it's not handled quickly, we can start to change the other person's identity in our head. We might start to tell ourselves things like they're selfish or any number of adjectives we start to assign the person. And when we start to say that about the other person, we start to feel differently. That's why it's so concerning when resentment comes up, because that means that, that the person I'm talking to who's resenting their partner is building a case against their partner. Now, they might be resentful of themselves too. You know, I wish I had never started that. <laughs> you know, it has taken me many steps and pushback to get that back into his department. And when you have an expectation, and you start to change them, that can be messy. So it's important to do resentment management as soon as you notice it. These are the things that you wanna do. You wanna think about what needs to be adjusted. Am I doing things I don't wanna do? Turns out I was doing things I didn't wanna do, and so that needed adjustment, and with an expectation, there's gonna be a little bit of pushback. So you need to do that. The other thing you need to do is watch what you're telling yourself about the other person. You don't want resentment to turn into a label that you give them. That's just, all that does is it puts a wall up between you and the other person, and that is not healthy in any way for a partnership. And the third thing you need to do is reintroduce gratitude. If you're gonna do this thing, and you may very well choose to keep doing it, then we need to talk again about being thankful when someone does something for someone else. We need to talk about appreciation and gratitude again. And you know, a lot of times your partner just forgets. They forget that that's important to do. And so all you need to do 
is get in there and remind them, hey, I have been doing this thing and I will keep doing it, but it would be really nice if you noticed it and saw it as a gift instead of an expectation. That would make me feel so much better. And that will keep the resentment lowering and keep the wall down and keep you connected. So if it's coming up for you, pay attention to it. It's just information and it's pointing you at something important that could, if it gets away from you, really negatively affect your relationship. So get in there, reintroduce gratitude, shake things up if you need to. And by the way, if you can right now catch yourself at the beginning of a resentment, that's a brilliant thing to do. Like right now, if you're doing something that's just kind of nice, maybe it's a new relationship or a new thing, you're doing it to be kind of nice. If you can visualize that if you're doing this in 10 years, you're gonna be resentful, rethink whether you want to or not. Catch it in the beginning so that it doesn't become a problem. And the last thing is, watch what you're saying about the other person. Putting them in a box, putting a label on them, that can be so harmful. It's a very human thing to do, but it gets in the way of our intimacy and our closeness and creates conflict and we don't want that. All right, if you are having a lot of resentment and that resentment is leading to arguments and fights even, then you can use the link I left to pick up 11 ways to turn an argument into a conversation. And it's just a bunch of tips and tools so you can navigate those difficult things and keep things nice and calm and healthy and productive.